Well, welcome to the season of Lent. It is the season that brings us closer and closer to a time of evolution of the soul. It is the 40 days, not counting Sundays, that lead up to Easter. That's Lent. 40 days? Well, it's reminiscent of the 40 days spent in the wilderness by Jesus in a time of preparing the soul, a time of soul evolution in his own ministry and lifetime. So we do journey during this time and we focus on how we can evolve the soul, how we can grow spiritually, how we can sort of perfect or hone the craft of being the light for the world that we're called to be. So we journey during this season, and quite often it's been a tradition that a lot of people think about Lent from their Christian traditions of saying it's a time of, well, I gotta give up something. You know, there's people say, oh my Lord, I'm gonna give up chocolate. Other people say, you know what, I'm gonna really go through some difficult time, I'm gonna give up liver. Uh, you know, well, you know, hey, we realize that sometimes people look for the easy way out of saying, I'm gonna give up something that, you know, uh, you know I'm gonna give up something I really don't care about. Notice a lot of people didn't say they're gonna give up something that's really valuable, you'll see in the struggle, but how about we give a different twist on it all? Instead of giving up, how about taking on? How about embracing something new and fresh in your life in a spiritual discipline? How about embracing some new thinking or a new approach to life? How about taking on something that is an opportunity for you to be a blessing or a gift in other ways to the world around you? But if you need to hold on to, I must give up something for my spiritual discipline, I've got something wonderful, a suggestion for you about what you could give up. Let me tell you what I would like you to give up or suggest for you is let's give up evil. That's right, give it up. Let's give up evil. And what is evil? Error thinking. That's right, wrong thinking. What evil is, it stems from just our error thinking our thoughts that are not in line with the divine power and presence of God and the unfolding of the all good. Now, wouldn't you love it if every day you woke up and thinking, I am thinking right thinking. I'm not thinking wrong thinking. I'm not thinking error thoughts, thoughts that are constantly missing the mark where I'm not hitting the target, where I'm not right on. I am thinking good thoughts. I'm thinking right thoughts. I am thinking engaging thoughts that are engaging the power and presence of God be wonderful if we all gave up evil gave up error thinking wow let's do that let's say for Lent I'm gonna give it up I'm giving up error thinking I'm giving it up and I'm gonna change my thoughts about it because down through the ages mystics of old spiritual traditions have taught that there is one ultimate reality one ultimate reality in this world and that ultimate reality meaning a final and fundamental truth a final and fundamental fact, one thing that we can anchor on, there is one ultimate reality. And that is this, that there is one life. That life is God's life. And that life is mine now. Now, if we could memorize any thought that's gonna help change our thinking, it's this. There is one life, not two, not multiple lives, going on not in, this, in the reality of this moment right now. There's one life and that life is God's life. Everything about me, everything around me is God's life. It's the experience, the energy, the presence of the divine. It's in everything. There's not a spot where God is not. So we embrace this very thinking that there is one life, that life is God's life, and that life is my life, my life. Right now, in this moment, I'm living God's life. The life of God is flowing in and through me in all ways. And so our thinking begins to move from error thinking, missing the mark, to now moving to righteousness, right thinking, moving in a way where we are releasing error thinking that brings about evil within our world. Evil being that which is just a misuse of this divine power within our life and our world. Jesus saw through the veil of this physical world and he could see this wonderful realm of all the divine, of all the good. But our problem is in this world, we're struggling still looking at the veil. We haven't looked through the veil. We haven't been able to see through that which is sort of clouding our vision because we're so focused on the physical world around us and all of its limitations, all of its lack. And we look at all those kind of things that are products of error thinking 
that creates such evil in the world. But he saw through it and experienced the spiritual and invites you to do the same. We have the beautiful story of Jesus visiting with the woman at the well. And at that moment, she had come to draw water out. And here is Jesus sitting in the well and carrying on a conversation with her and inviting her in some way to make a powerful change in her life, saying, I will give you living water where you will thirst no more. Living water. Living water. What's water that's alive, that's living? Well, down through the ages, water has been symbolic of thought, consciousness. I'm going to give you a new thought. I'm going to give you a living consciousness, something that's vibrant and alive, not one that's stagnant and struggling with stress, torment, evil, struggling with lack, and all of these things that we think about in our day-to-day -day experience of the world. I'm going to give you waters of wisdom. I'm going to give you a consciousness that's awakened, that's going to help you through these purified thoughts begin to understand and see the world through the veil of that which has been muddied, that which has been simply uh, leaving us in lack, leaving us thirsty, never satisfied, leaving us a way that water just, those thoughts are not quenching the desires within us. But what Jesus was offering is living water, alive, living, vibrant thought and consciousness for you. I am offering that in the teaching that's what Jesus is saying to her. What I offer you in these words, in this spiritual guidance for your life, is something that will be transformational and living and enable you to see beyond the physical and all of its error thinking and all of its limitation, to see the goodness of God unfolding at all times, to see the good in each and every moment and every circumstance. Jesus taught that the kingdom of God is present and it only needs to be realized. You know, the other day, I was feeling a little bit like I just wanted to see God. I just wanted to experience God. And I was out walking the dog, and as I was just offering this prayerful uh, thought within mind, I just wanted to experience more of God. And suddenly there I could hear the birds singing in a beautiful chorus. It seemed like they were louder than ever before. And I could see as I looked through the trees, some deer gathering and coming out and just watching me watch them. And I saw all of nature coming alive and daffodils coming up from the ground, ready to bloom. And I began to realize that all around me were some amazing unfoldings of the kingdom of God through nature. And then a neighbor drove by, stopped the car and said, I've been looking for you. I've got this gift for you. I wanted to give this to you uh, and your partner. I wanted to make sure that you had this. And it was a wonderful box of goodies. I'd walked down the street a little bit more and another neighbor said, oh, I'm so glad to see you because I've got something special for you. I've been holding some magazines that I wanted you to give to Robert that would just hopefully be an entertainment for him as he's resting and something that might just be of a wonderful gift. All in all, it just went on throughout the day and I began to realize I'm experiencing God. I'm experiencing the very love of God through nature all around me, through the world all around me, through the people all around me, through the kindness all around me, through the generosity all around me. I just have to stop and realize I am in the kingdom and it's all around me. What's so crucial is we just have to stop and realize it. So when we begin to realize it, it unfolds for us to the level or to the degree that we think about it or contemplate on it. You know, the more time you start spending and thinking, wow, I'm walking in the kingdom of God. I'm living in the kingdom of God. You are all kingdomites with me as we celebrate this wonderful divine presence. We're all in this together. And the more you think about it, the more you contemplate about it, the more it unfolds within your life. Sometimes we get so busy, we haven't really had time to even think about God. Think about the goodness of God to take time to contemplate the kingdom of heaven all around us. And when we just go through the day not focusing on the all good, what happens is our thoughts are open to error thinking. And we're easily led astray to say, you know what, this world isn't all that great. There's not all kinds of good things happening. There's a lot of evil in this world. There's a lot of bad things going on. And then contribute to them with our own error thinking and allowing it to just enhance more and more. But to what degree are you contemplating 
Are you really thinking about the kingdom of heaven? Because to that level, you will receive, and it will be a spiritual experience that will manifest something even more. When you go to the river to draw water, do you bring a thimble or a 50 gallon drop? And that really describes exactly, as we come to the river of God's blessing, as we come to the river of God's goodness, as we come to the waters of living water, of living power that lift us up, what have we come to that water's edge with? A small thimble? I'll just have a little scoop and let it drain through the thimble itself. Or have you come with a big 50 gallon drop saying, I want to contemplate it all. I want to gather it all. I want as much as I can get. I want to be filled to the fullness of this living water, this consciousness, this awareness. I want to be every day realizing I'm in the kingdom of God. And my thinking then is coming from that perspective and unfolding. So what are you bringing to the river of life? What? Degree, what level, what container are you bringing? Because it's that level that will manifest within your life. You see, there is just one reality, not two. And this is where the light bulb goes on in our life because evil is not an ultimate reality. It's not a final, it's not a fundamental of truth. It's not there, it's not a, an, uh, an entity on its own. It's simply an experience. Now think about that. Evil has no power of its own, but it is an experience that we go through. It's an experience that is the journey towards our reality. Sometimes we're going through the evil of this world. We're going through the experiences around us. They're just simply experiences. They have no power, but we've been taught so often in our world, there's good and evil and they're at battle with each other. As if, what, the God that we serve might be defeated by evil? Really? Is that the kind of God you serve? We got this idea that, oh, you know, sometimes evil rises up and it overcomes good. And oh, there's a struggle and a battle. And we think, wait, 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 wait. But God is the all power, the almighty. And you think for a moment that evil is stronger or has a power of its own to overcome the divine? Wow, you have a pretty limiting God when you think of that. And maybe your thoughts of God being the almighty need to be removed to say, God is sometimes the Almighty, not always. Sometimes God is weak and sometimes just isn't mighty at all because you've given into this idea, this error thinking of good and evil being entities that are uh, some sort of reality. But evil is not a thing of itself. Evil is simply the misuse of power, that divine power, that thought power that you have to create, to manifest amazing things. But we allow error thinking wrong thinking, negative thinking, to just give power then to that which is less than the highest and best within our world. And here's the thing, evil will disappear when you stop thinking about it and stop indulging in it. Isn't that wonderful? Wow, if we stop giving power to the evil in the world, if we stop giving power to the error thinking in the world, you know, I know how it is in Facebook. You think somebody posts something and you think I need to make my comment that's controversial and then they make their comment and it's controversial and then it goes back and forth. Before you know it, you have a string of 50, 60 comments of arguments that you've just created going on and on and wasted someone's day as they read through the whole thing. Well, how about if we just don't indulge and we don't just let it be? Oh, but I gotta get my two cents in there. Wait a minute, I gotta say my part. Just let it be, just let it be. If you don't indulge in it, what happens? It goes away, you give no power to it. So what we have to understand is that we cannot stop believing in it as long as we're indulging in it. So we're gonna constantly believe and engage in error thinking every time we indulge, every time we embrace it more and more. We're called to turn from evil to good. Now. Scott Dunn beautifully played the Lord's Prayer. And you saw the words on the screen. You know that phrase, deliver us from evil. What a powerful element within that prayer. Deliver us from thinking thoughts that evil has a power of its own. That's what it's actually saying. Deliver us where our prayer is that we might be delivered, that we might give it up. 
That's right. Give it up. That's my prayer. I want to give up error thinking. I want to give up evil thoughts. I want to give up anything that entertains this. Deliver me. Let the power of God now flow through my life in such a way that I freely choose right now. I've given up evil thinking. I've given up error thinking. My thoughts are focused on the highest and best and the all good unfolding in my life every single moment of my day. Scripture says, beloved, now, now, we are sons of God. Right now, your sons, your daughters, your children of God. Since each soul has some part of this whole of all that is of God, each soul, you and you and you and you and you and me, we're all part of the divine. We're all part of God. Each soul has some part of the whole. It's impossible then for any part of the whole to be lost or any soul to be lost. So for us to engage in the thinking of that somehow God is out to punish us because uh, of all this and that we may be lost in some way. You know what? I want to tell you this. This idea of damnation has been so foreign to the very thinking of Jesus. It's, it's as foreign as any concept of evil might be to the mind of God because God is all good. So if you're all good, is there room in your thinking for evil or error? Or bad? There isn't. Because it's all good. Whoa, 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 whoa. A little thought? No. Not even a tiny bit. Because if God is the all good, then how could this sense of damnation and a punishment be part of the mind of God? And certainly, how would it be part of the very teaching of Jesus, who brought about this wonderful truth for our life? I did not come to condemn the world, the scripture says. Read your Bible. Yet we think, oh, wait a minute. No, no, Jesus' message is, you better be Walk in the world straight and narrow way, or honey, you're going to be condemned. Well, we get the idea that that's the message of Jesus. You see how we've missed the boat so entirely? But Jesus taught that no man or woman should have burden on your life. No man or woman should have this sense of lack and stress, stress and have this uh, be burdened down in some way. Because the scripture says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Oh, but we're thinking these error thinkings. Oh, there's a hell out there, and I'm going to go there if I don't straighten up and fly right. There's a hell out of there, and I better get my get out of hell card. I got to go to church, show up at least Christmas and Easter. I, 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 I could get my card renewed, right? So I get out, escape hell. I got to find my passage somewhere. Uh, wait, because when I die, I'm, you know, they may send me off to hell for some of the thoughts or things I've said. You see, we carry all this burdens of guilt and shame through the journey of our life. And Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor, you're struggling, you're working, and you're uh, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest. A strength. A power. A peace. A calmness. An assurance. That's the right thinking. For as Jesus knew it would be impossible for men to come to him as a personality, Jesus wasn't saying, come unto me, this human, this personality, this divine uh, person here on earth. No, Jesus knew that would be impossible. What he's saying is, come unto the teaching I'm offering you. Come unto my words that I'm offering you. Come unto the insight and education that I'm offering you. Come and learn of me. Learn, it says. Study. Know the very teaching of Jesus. In our world today, so my people are so busy praising Jesus. Don't know a single thing about the teaching of Jesus. What? Jesus taught something? We don't practice the teaching of Jesus. We're too busy praising Jesus. You know, we got our songs. We got our dance. We got our tambourine. We got our uh, choirs. We got all these kind of things. We just got to get our praise on. We came to church. We got 45 minutes of high energy praise on dance and movement. When it comes to the sermon... Oh, can you wrap that up quick? Because, you know, we got to go. I'm exhausted from the praise session we just had. You know? We're missing the boat. Do you understand that Jesus said here, come to this understanding, come to this teaching, because there will be no burden if you're tuned into God. There's going to be a burden with your error thinking. There's going to be a burden because it's going to lead to evil ways. There's going to be a burden when you're missing the very understanding that in all things, the goodness of God is there. 
God is in everything and in all things, and it's all good all around us. You know, this universe is a spiritual system. Do you understand that? It's created of the divine. What we live in is a universe that's truly a spiritual system, and evil does not fit into its contemplation. You know, this all that is God that is this universe, there's no evil that's part of it. Oh, but we have brought, we have created through our error thinking, through our desire to judge, condemn, to speak ill, to push someone else down to elevate ourselves up through our ego and so much more in our error thinking and through our guilt and shame that we're going through that we want to impart on somebody else and push them through guilt and shame and so and so it goes on. We're experiencing then the many times that we've missed the mark in our life. There's a great difference in our reaction when we believe that evil is an entity or when we understand that merely it's an experience. It's an experience. It's not an entity. Oh, people said there's evil in the room. Mm -hmm. Oh, watch out. There's evil here. There's evil there as if there's some sort of entity out to get you. And of course, growing up in my fundamentalist tradition, it was that there's a devil's out to get you. You know, everything I turned around. Oh, the devil's there. The devil's there. Watch out. The devil's on my shoulder. Uh, everything was all about the devil's making me do stuff I don't want to do. Uh -huh. Oh, you know, I didn't want to dance, but oh, my Lord, the devil's making me dance. You know, I, I didn't want to move in that sinful way. You know, I didn't want to go there. And so there was the devil was doing it to me. You know, we get so crazy when we begin to think of it as an entity out there. It's an experience of error thinking. It's a result. And so we also somehow engage that we go through our error thinking that we must somehow suffer to be good spiritual people. But, you know, we need to go through a little misfortune. You know, that we maybe need to think a little bit about that, you know, maybe that's a good thing. We become more godly when we've gone through all kinds of suffering in our life. Let me tell you this. The universe does not demand suffering. It's not saying, mm -hmm, you got to suffer. i got to see you suffer a little bit. I want you to suffer to, to make me happy. Somehow we've got this idea that, oh, if the more we would suffer and the more miserable our life is, or the more we deny any kind of happiness, joy, or good in our life, because we think, oh, that will just make me more pious and more wonderful. As if the universe says, I'm so glad you denied a little joy and happiness. I'm so glad you suffered today. I'm so thrilled with your miserable life that you're, in, you're enduring and going through because the more misery, the more suffering you're engaging, somehow then you are more pious. What? Where do we get these ideas? You see, that's our error thinking. Suffering is man-made and it happens through our ignorance. Our error thinking, we begin to think from ignorance perspective. And when we do, we create all this in our experience. This error thinking is what's opening up our life to suffering, to lack, to torment. But what about thoughts that are based on what I see in experience, you might say? You know, what am I, I'm seeing all kinds of things out there. Aren't I entitled to have these things? And this is evil, this is wrong. Let me tell you this, here's where we begin to make excuses for our error thinking when we do this. We look in the Bible, the beautiful stories that are offered to us in this teaching. Jesus and the disciples crossing the Sea of Galilee in a boat and a storm rises up. And what happens is the disciples begin to focus on the storm in error thinking. And they're like, oh, my Lord, you'd understand what's gonna happen. The boat's gonna tip over. We may all drown And error thinking, takes them into torment, takes them further, further further away from their highest and best. It takes them into a place of suffering and fear and all. Oh, it just escalates to no end. And what is Jesus doing? Napping, sleeping. And when they wake him up, he's the one who speaks peace be still. It's like, why are you focusing on the storm rather than focusing on the peace? Because, oh, well, well I see the waves. I see uh, the, the boat tossing. I see all these things around me. I see the water splashing over the edge. I see us, I see us drowning. I see us sinking to the bottom of the, of the Sea of Galilee. I see all that. Yeah, because you're looking through the physical. When you look through the veil, you see the spiritual side and you see the perfect peace. Jesus looked through the veil and said, peace be still and calm the storm. So where are you looking? What you looking at? Mm -hmm. That's what we're gonna ask, what you looking at? Right, what are you looking at? 
Are you looking at the physical or are you looking at the spiritual? Now we find a beautiful example as the disciples gathered with Jesus as he was teaching the 5,000. And those who gathered around to listen to Jesus' incredible educational experience and spiritual enrichment class, he was offering this wonderful insight. It was late in the day. The disciples said, Jesus, you've got to let these people go. They've got to find something to eat. And Jesus says, what do you have? And they brought him, well, all we have is just this. This limitation here, all we have is two fishes. I mean, uh, five, uh, two loaves and five fishes. I love the symbolism. Two and five. Two and five make what? Seven. What is seven? The number of completion. The number of enough. The number of perfection. So what they're saying is, I see just a little basket of nothingness. I see a basket that's barely able. And Jesus looked at it. What you got? Seven. I see enough. I see perfection. I see completion. I'm looking beyond the physical to see the spiritual. I'm not going to engage in thinking this ain't enough. We can't do anything with this. There's no possibility of anything great happening with this. What Jesus was given was two and five equaling seven. The message is what Jesus was given was enough. And it's always enough. When we begin to see that it's enough, when we look through the circumstances around us and let go of seeing the physical and see the spiritual, we see that there's enough. But our error thinking would say, oh, there's not enough. And what happens then? Well, we got to sweat this. There's just not enough to go around. And there's not enough. What are we going to do? And we need to dismiss everybody. We got to send them home. We, we got to quit this. We got to shut this thing down. We got to just, because why? We entered into error thinking. Beautiful examples for us. This evil that we call then in this world uh, that's around us as a result of error thinking only has power to destroy itself. That's all. It doesn't have power to destroy good because the good is the almighty, is God. God is the good. God is good sometimes, not every day. No, well, no, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Isn't we say that over and over again? So when we're looking at this error thinking, when we're looking at this that leads us into pathways of torment and suffering and guilt and shame and so on, so we're looking at understanding that the heaven and hell are both states of consciousness. They're an experience. We can experience heaven right now. And you can experience hell right now. And many of you are. Because it's all up to us on what we're thinking and contemplating about. Are you ready to give up your error thinking? Are you ready to have a day, a life that's full, rewarding, and free from error thinking? Are you ready to give up evil? Well, this time, this season of Lent is a time of releasing and letting go. And let me tell you, one of the great things you can do is to give it up. Give up this error thinking. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 29 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. The yoke is the teaching. Take my teaching upon you, Jesus is saying, and learn. Learn from me. Learn of me. What do you say? But learn from me is really what we're trying to understand. For I am meek and lowly, and ye shall find rest into your souls. Rest that is liberating. Rest that sets you free. Rest that liberates you from all the stress and worry and fear. And, oh, my Lord, you know, I, growing up as a child in the fundamental Christian church, I lived in fear every day. Fear. Oh, my Lord, if my mother and father were at home, they said they were going to come back at four o'clock. Where are they? Oh, did Jesus come? And I've been left behind. Oh, no. And the fear would rise up with me. And I know I was still, I, I hadn't asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins five minutes ago. I should have every five minutes, every five minutes, I got to reconnect, make sure because I'm in such fear, I'm going to be left behind. Well, to help out, I had to pick up the phone and I would call the saint of the church, Mrs. Bridge. And if Mrs. Bridge answered the phone, hello. Okay. <laughs> right right now. I'm good to go. I'm good to go. I'm still all right. All right. Okay. They're just late. But that fear just occupied my life every single day. I live from a perspective of fear. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could give it up 
Well, I did. I changed my thinking. I left error thinking. I know that the scripture says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never be left behind. You know why? Because the presence of God goes before me. The presence of God is with me. The presence of God is in me. The presence of God is around me. And wherever I am, God is. Wherever I am, God is. So we come to this powerful truth that Jesus thought that we are encouraged to give it up and experience, experience this liberty and freedom to live the ultimate reality of God's goodness. We change our thinking. No matter what you're going through, I see the good. I see the good. No matter what you're going through, I speak the good. I speak about the good about this experience because why I know it's there, I'm gonna look through the veil I'm gonna look past the storm. I'm gonna look past the little basket of limitation. I'm looking past it and I see infinite blessing and abundance unfolding for my life. Hallelujah. It's time to give up error thinking, amen? Thank you.